Hey guys, it's Troy, and I'm finally able to do a video I have been wanting to do for a month. And that is because I finally got in and have been using the Platinum Kuridas. I'm assuming that's the pronunciation because I haven't heard anything or seen anything that gives me the correct pronunciation. But the Kuridas from Platinum. Uh, obviously a Japanese company from 1919. And uh, I had ordered this pen from uh, the pen thing up in New Jersey and here's his website uh, but uh, I had asked for this particular pen I knew that he was getting them in and there was not a great distribution or a product launch for this particular pen there were manufacturing delays that came along so they weren't able to get the pen out in mass like they had originally planned for February this year got pushed back until April at least then there were some distribution delays um, not enough pens made it out to, to various dealers there were some people who were able to get uh, these in various uh, nibs um, Brian at the pen thing was able to get a lot of these in with a fine nib. Well, I wanted a medium nib, so I was holding on until I could get the pen that I wanted in the right nib. So that added like almost another month to the uh, the ability to be able to get this particular pen. So it wasn't a great product launch for Platinum. And I've heard that from various people, not just uh, my distributor. But, so I waited. And... I could have settled for a fine nib. I decided I did not want to settle on the fine. I wanted a medium nib, and I'm glad that I did. So, that being said, I'm a curious sort. Curidas, what does it mean? Uh, so, uh, one of the first things I did, well, let's see if that's a made-up word, or let's see if it actually means something. So, I went ahead to Google Translate, and I stuck in Curidas, and it sticks out something like, oh, Hindi. <laughs> Kuridas it turns out that it could be a Hindi word. Well, actually, it's not. It turns out that the word Kuridas is a made-up word, and it's actually uh, a combination of two words. A Japanese word, Kuridasu, referring to letting it out, or to extend the nib out of the pen, letting it out. And the English word, curiosity. So they came up with Kuridas. Uh, so, Kuridasu in curiosity combination so in English Japanese word so there you go the Kuridas is not the first retractable pen that was made by platinum they came out with the knock out in like the 1950s so this is really the first foray back into retractable pens by platinum in quite some time so let's go ahead and show you what the Kuridas looks like when you open it up there is a nice plastic presentation box that looks like this and there's nothing special on the outside but you can hear a few things rattling around inside so you open it up and you've got the Kuridas sitting on a nice little pen bed and you pull it out and it is a retractable pen so much like you're very familiar I'm sure with ballpoint pens that click and it comes with this little tag on the clip and here's what you've got you do have a clip and that clip is detachable I have not detached it off this pen because I don't want to <laughs> and uh, quite honestly I tried it just to see what it would be like to take it off and I said you know that's actually too much trouble I'm not going to bother but you've got kind of a conical end down here this is a pen rest so when you set it down instead of a pen stop let's say with just a clip you actually have a pen rest that sits there like that um, and you've got a long blue clicker and it is a retractable pen. Let's show you the action down inside. See, you've got a nib that sits down inside of a pocket, and that pocket sticks out when that pen goes to stick the nib out the hole. And then it retracts back to a resting position. Uh, and it is something that you do have to take apart in order to fill. But before I get there, Let's go ahead and show you what else it comes with. I'll take that off, take off this little pad, and you do have your user's manual in here. I gotta be honest with you, um, it's uh, got several languages. It's not the easiest thing to follow along, uh, but you do have some diagrams. And it's interesting because you've got the diagram and it's not until the next page that it actually gives you some of the uh, instructions. It did come with a converter, which is something that I did like. 
So a platinum converter, I've already put that converter in that pen, so it did come uh, with that. So if you're going to pay it, roughly $80 is the average MSRP that I'm seeing, or if not MSRP, it's definitely the street price that's going. I've seen it as cheap as $70 in some places, but $80 seems to be uh, the majority of the pricing on these. And it did come with uh, a platinum proprietary ink cartridge which I decided not to use I do have a drawer full of uh, platinum cartridges but and I'll just throw this in there with the rest of the cartridges but I decided to use a converter and it came with a little tiny tool this thing is actually used to help get um, help get that clip off from the pen and I decided uh, after playing with it nah no not really something that I'm interested in so I'm not gonna monkey with it all right, so here we go. <sighs> Is it fair to compare this to its competitors? I would say so. Uh, when you look at retractable fountain pens, then you have two other brands that are out there that are dominant. I would say that you've got, obviously, the newcomer here, the Curidas, and then you've got the Pilot. And what is the Pilot? The Vanishing Point, or you know, I guess the Namiki um, called it the Capless. And it's also the same kind of concept. You've got the clickable extension there. And if you look down in, I showed you the other. Let's show you what that looks like. See, it actually has a little door, trap door kind of scenario there. All right, then you can look at the Lamy Dialog 3. And this is a twist action. So you've got a little ball, and you twist, and it extends. Not a new concept in pens. I mean, if you've got some of the old safety pens from the 1910s, 1920s, it's the same kind of concept where a nib retracts uh, using the twist. So, is it fair to compare? Well, okay, it's retractable. This Lamy here, um, average pricing right now about $320. And uh, quite honestly, it's the, my least favorite of the three that you see here in front of me. Actually, the two clickable ones are really more top of the selection for me on these particular two. Now as far as their weight, believe it or not, you look at this. This is an all-metal pen. You would expect that an all-metal pen uh, would be heavier than an all-plastic pen. But as you can see, you've actually got a pretty noticeable size differential between the two pens. Um, this particular pen, actually, when I started working on it and playing with it and weighing it, 29 grams or 1.05 ounces this 28 grams and for a safe comparison between the two the only difference in its contents I've got ink in this I do not have ink in this converter in this converter in this so I wanted to get them uh, not at their build weight but as their as you pick it up and go to use it weight so this is a 28 gram 1.0 ounces fully inked ready to roll and this being uh, a 29 grams, 1.05 all metal, smaller pen. So if you're only going by weight, they're actually just about even, just one gram difference between the two. All right, looking at retractable pens, let's go ahead and do a quick disassembly if on this, your Lamy Dialog 3. So you can actually get an idea uh, of the difference between those if you are familiar with uh, retractable pens. This one actually screws out. Right, and your converter goes down inside there. I actually have some ink, and this one is inked up. But uh, you would put this in, screw it in, get that screwed in place, and you would screw this in place as well. Fairly simple, right? Not hard to put together. Well, and I got some ink on me by doing that. That's fine. Let's look at the pilot real quick. You pull apart, unscrew it, this just pops right out. You've got your converter that sits here in the end, you just pull it out, you get your typical pilot converter, pop it right in, just pop this right in, and basically you follow this little nipple, it goes straight down into that little hole, and then you take it and you screw it together. That's all there is to it. I mean, simple. Probably the simplest of the three as far as I'm concerned. Very efficient, very good pen. This one is a little more complicated, believe it or not, even though it's you know all plastic. 
you pull it apart. This part here actually can come out. So if you, you um, I have taken it out a few times, you can push it through, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. This is a little bit different in that you, you kind of follow the nipple through the trail, if you can use that expression. You get a tiny little nipple here, and you go in, over, and out. So if you want to put it back together, you go in, over, and in. So in, over, and out and you pull this right out. The spring you want to leave inside of here. You don't want to take that spring out of it. And then you do the sort of the same thing. You know, nipple over and out. And you can see there is a tiny little nipple here right there that you want to follow along in the little path, that little channel there on this sleeve. And then you've got this converter that comes right off. And that's how you ink up or put on a cartridge or put on a converter onto the Kurados as you would put your cartridge right on that right there. One of the things about this particular pen that I wanted to make sure however that it wasn't the exact same thing as you would find like a Preppy because you, you figure the Preppy, the Plaisir, and the Prefount they're more or less the same thing for here um, for the section and for the nib but you can see the nibs are a little bit different. They're the same kind of shape and the same kind of design where they wrap around there. And it is just essentially just a smaller version um, of what you see here. Obviously the, the preppy that I have on my hands here is a $5 pen. This, an $80 pen. So you really hope that the design writes a whole lot better. I, I tend to like medium nibs over fine nibs which is why I've been ordering mine in in mediums. I put up with a fine if I have to, but I don't necessarily want to. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together. Nope, not going to go that way. You've got to go in from this side on each time. So what the single channel is, follow the nipple in around that track, and there you go. So it's, it's one of those things, a little more complicated. You just have to get used to it when you go to take it apart and put it back together. You put this in, you depress the spring, follow the nipple in, trace over in that track and down, and there you go. Then you would screw this thing back together, and there you're back to clicking, and you're ready to go. If, if you can look at it and follow it, it's not going to be so horrific, but I will tell you, the first time you do it, you go, hmm... Because uh, if you're used to the simplicity of the pilot, um, then it's a little more complicated uh, here on the plastic Kuridas by Platinum. So there you go. Um, I've, sh I've shown you the comparison between the various pens that it competes with and uh, even some of uh, its own. So when you're looking at, uh, I showed you the parts and some of the pieces. I've shown you that the clip can come off. Uh, what I haven't done yet is to give you all the statistics on this particular pen and a writing sample. And let's go into the stats right now. Sometimes what I've been wanting to do is uh, just use an ordinary notepad. This is a notepad that I use here at my desk uh, for work and for personal notes. So rather than go ahead and get out some nice expensive paper, um, International Minute Press happens to be a printer that is no longer here in my hometown. Uh, but I decided I'd go ahead and use this pad since I had it on my shelf and I needed a new notepad. So here we go. So click. Here we go. This is the Platinum. Kuridas. And uh, this is a medium nib. And like I said, I'm glad I waited on the medium nib instead of settling for the fine. When I was placing my order and I had to wait, I told Brian, look, if all you get in are red ones, I'd settle for the red one. It does come in a variety of colors. Uh, I didn't want the green, didn't want the smoke. Uh, the red was a maybe, the clear not so much. Um, I wanted the blue. So I made sure I got the Abyss Blue is what I wanted. I wanted it in a medium nib. I would have settled for a red if that's all he got in, knowing that Platinum was having trouble with their distribution network getting out product 
Um, and uh, I mean, I saw other distributors that had medium nibs, whereas he didn't. Other people are having trouble keeping in stock fine nibs, and whereas that's what this guy got a lot of fine nibs, it, it seems. But I wanted the medium nib. My experience thus far with Platinum is that if I'm going to get it, I wanted a medium nib. I'm glad I waited because this is actually a very smooth steel nib. Price points. All right, so let's talk about that just a little bit uh, because of that steel nib. Here you had an 80 US dollars. This is com starting out at 156 US dollars uh, for the vanishing point. And it'll go down a little bit, let's say, when you're looking at um, the Decimo, let's say. The Decimo is what my wife has. She has it in the lavender color. And the Decimo actually goes to about $144 or so uh, uh, compared to 80 here. And like I said, about 320 for the Lamy. So for 80 bucks, you don't expect quite the quality that you would get out of the others. I will say that I absolutely love my Pilot Vanishing Point. Um, it's, it's a great pen, great selection. This, if you're looking for a budget version, let's say, uh, if you're looking for a good retractable pen, I have been using this since I got it. Since I first got it, I was eagerly anticipating it. I got it, inked it up, then playing with it, pull it apart, put it back together, pull it apart, put it back together, play with it. Uh, so I knew how to show you guys how to do it. Uh, and I just said, you know, I kind of like it. It's, it's a little more complex as far as its mechanism. I do like the fact that it's somewhat translucent. You can see through it, so you can actually see the, uh, the action of the pen. And um, I do like the fact that you can look and see that right there. The pen come right out of the pocket, and you can see that it extends when it comes out. You know, it's kind of neat. It's a novelty. And I like the convenience of the click, just like you would have on an old ballpoint. So I put into this pen some color verse. Uh, I put in the cat. You know, from Schrodinger's cat. So th that's the ink. I, I kind of wanted to match the color, the abyss blue. I kind of like blue pens. You can probably see that um, on my other platinums. You can probably see kind of a pattern there, some more blue. So I figured I wanted the blue Curados. So for an $80 retractable with a nice smooth medium nib, I have been quite happy with this pen thus far. I've been using it a lot. I mean, I'm talking for notes, for writing letters, uh, for work, for personal everyday carry over the, over the, uh, the past several days. It's been my primary EDC pen. And every time I've pulled out this pen, every time, first time, it was reliable. And smooth. That, to me, whether the nib is steel or whether it's gold, I mean, don't get me wrong, gold nibs are nice, like on those two more expensive pens, this being a steel nib, it actually is very smooth. That's what I want. That's my standard. Not whether or not it's steel, not whether or not it's gold necessarily, how well does it write? Because if it's a crappy nib, it's, it's not going to be what I want. Positives. I like the fact that it's a big chunky pen. I like the fact that it fits fairly well in my hand. I like oversized pens to begin with. It's got a good long length to it. I've already shown you the width. I've already shown you the length. Um, and I've already uh, given you its weight. So, the downside. Some people don't like this clip. And some people have actually taken off this clip from what I've heard. And even if you take it off, you're going to end up with this bump right here that that clip sits on. So that plastic nib right here is going to be stuck on here. And the only way you're going to get it off is to grind it off. I'm not willing to do that, and I'm willing to take it just as it sits. Because if I can sit and write with that pilot vanishing point, I can certainly write with that. The only thing that bothers me a little bit is this down here, this little stand part right here. And the problem is that when I go to hold it, it kind of rubs on my middle finger here when I'm holding the pen. So if I hold it back just a little bit, it, it's not so bad. 
um, when I'm just using it for quick jots and quick notes doesn't bother me a bit but when I've sat and written for a while I can feel that abrasion against my middle finger right here with these little fins down here so that's the only negative really uh, that I can see because I don't mind this I don't consider this to be a negative to me it doesn't really bother me I can't really feel it when I go to write with it but I do feel this down here uh, on the flip side it is a nice little pen stand so it'll hold steady like this so anyway would I recommend these yeah actually I kinda like it for the eighty dollar price point which I'll be honest with you to me this is more like a fifty or sixty dollar pen this isn't an eighty dollar pen in my opinion it's all plastic so it's in my opinion slightly overpriced for what it is especially considering the uh, quality that I get out of some of the other lower end uh, platinum pens uh, I think if they drop their price point just a little bit they may sell a whole lot more of them I'd be more apt to buy one even for my son who has been asking me for a retractable for a while and so Rather than go to the upper end uh, in getting him a pilot, I might actually go ahead and get him a curry Doss. Uh, my only concern is if I'm going to give this to a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, I want it to be rugged. I want to make sure that this plastic doesn't break. Uh, it's, it's a fairly rugged plastic, and it does feel a little bit better to me than some of the other platinum uh, plastic pens. Uh, we'll see how the durability is over the long haul. But so far in my using it, carrying it around in my pocket, putting it in and out of pen sleeves and all. It seems to be fairly decent. Can't speak towards the usability of the clip because I almost never use them, but it's there and it seems sturdy. doesn't seem to be going over anywhere. So there you go, the Curados. It is the, the latest retractable pen issued by Platinum. Uh, something for consideration if you can find them because uh, quite often some of the distributors have got them sold out and uh, the selection that they've got for nibs seems to be fairly limited. But like I said, I waited for mine to get it in a medium nib and I'm rather glad that I did. Hey.